This is John Cole with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and today we're going to answer the question: Is the Huram juicer a waste of money? And this is a question that you may be asking yourself if you're looking to buy a Huram juicer. So you know, before we even get into the video, there's a few comments I want to say. Number one, Huram has probably the most quantity or different types of slow juicers on the market. They started introducing slow juicers many years ago and have many different models each a little bit different so it's very hard to say oh this her all her arm juicers are maybe not so good or maybe they're all the best right it depends on the specific model you have some of their models are actually made in korea which generally i find have higher quality and some of their other models are more mass market models they're lower quality and they're made in china so that's the number first question is to ask yourself, which Hurum model is it? Because everyone's going to be a little bit different. I have made videos on different Hurum model juicers in the past. Okay, uh, Today we'll be talking about this one specifically. This is the Hurum HAA juicer. This is their latest technology. They're describing this as the alpha technology as compared to the second generation technology, which is the previous technology that's still current not outdated and uh, I'll be comparing it to the second generation in a little bit and then they have of course their first generation machines that's if you have a Huram juicer from a long time ago you know uh, the, the white ones well a lot of them were white anyways when they came out they were white but that's the original technology and that's the one that I don't really recommend so much these days uh, how you'll know if you have a, a second generation or the alpha technology if you want to take a look at that juicing screen if at the juicing screen, if you just have basically a, a conical shape with no holes on the bottom of the juicing screen except a large hole, uh, that's the second generation of Alpha Series. And if you have a hole in the bottom of the juicing screen, you have the first generation, which in my opinion, you probably should be upgrading because there are better juicers out there. Speaking about their first generation Hurum, I have heard with some of my customers that have purchased from me and purchased from other places, and that actually contact me, John, can I get Huron parts? Will these parts from Omega fit the Huron? Because people are having hard times getting parts and support from Huron. And actually at one point, you know, just in the last year or so, Huron maybe didn't have a US office to handle this. And even to date, they still do not list spare parts on their website, which I would encourage them to do like many other juicer manufacturers, right? You could easily buy Omega juicer parts for Omega juicers on the Omega website so you don't have to fear like, oh, am I gonna buy a Huram and I'll never be able to get parts for it? Well, that may have happened to some previous Huram owners. So I guess the next thing I wanna talk about is uh, the Huram company. You know, I have visited the Huram company, their facility in Korea. They do some amazing work over there. They make some of the latest technology, some of the latest and greatest juicers and have been innovating. They are actually the ones that created the vertical single auger juicers now that many other companies have now copied and is infringed on patents. You know, Luckily, many companies will change it just a little bit so it doesn't infringe on their original patent, but they are the original and they are the best in some cases of the vertical single auger technology. Now the next thing to answer is, is the Huram juicer a waste of money? Okay, so I'm gonna say this as to that statement, right? I don't think any good quality slow juicer is a waste of money. If it gets you to juice and you could eat more fruits and vegetables because of it, I think it's a well invested use of money, right? Throwing your money off the Golden Gate Bridge might be a bad investment because you're never going to see that money again. But literally, even if you buy a Huram or any other brand high quality juicer that's going to last you a long time, it's a good investment. Because if you use it every day, it's going to make an investment that's even more important than the amount of money or financial resources you may have or not have in the bank. It gives you the best resource, it gives you the greatest level of health resource or you know, uh, your health. Because I've learned at a young age, because I almost lost my life when I was younger, 
that your health is your greatest wealth because I almost lost my life. And hopefully it won't be at the end of your life when you'll finally realize this. And I'm glad that you guys are actually taking the time to watch this video now to learn about juicers. Besides this video, I have over 450 videos on this YouTube channel explaining you all the different kinds of juicers, maybe the ju best juicer for you, comparing different juicers to each other so that you can select the right one for you. That being said, I believe you know a waste of money are some of the low quality, imported, inexpensive juicers from China. They basically uh, copied and infringe on patents in some cases, uh, many of the different high quality single auger juicers uh, that are made in Korea that significantly work better and have longer warranties. So to really know if the Huram HAA slow juicer is, I wouldn't say it's like a waste of money, but a good value or not, the only way to do that is to compare it to something, right? So to know if the Huram HAA juicer is a good juicer or not, we need to have a reference point, right? It's kind of like if you're a runner and you run a five minute mile, like how is that compared? Well, if nobody ever ran the mi a mile before and you're the only person that had five minutes, then you know, hey, my time is probably pretty good. But if people before you have run a four minute mile, then you know your time's, hey, pretty, pretty good, but it's not the fastest. So we need to have a reference point to compare the Huram HAA juicer to. And uh, what we're gonna compare it to is actually one of my favorite juicers, the juicer that I personally use the most these days, and it's right here. This is known as the Omega VSJ843 juicer. And if you look at these guys, actually they look very similar, and uh, we'll get into this in a little bit. So first, let's go over just comparing these two machines side by side. Let's go over some of the specifications on them, right? All right, so the Omega VSJ843 juicer, that runs at a low and slow 43 revolutions per minute. Over on the Huram HAA juicer, this one runs at 43 revolutions per minute. That's very curious that both these different companies would sell a juicer that has the same RPMs. <laughs> over on the Omega VSJ843, this juicer is made in Korea, and over on the Huram HAA, this juicer is also made in Korea. So yes, like I said, you know, you guys wanna get a good quality juicer and most of those coming out of Korea for the vertical slow juicers anyways. Next, I wanna talk about something that's very important to me and hopefully you guys as well. It's the warranty, right? Warranty is super critical on the machine you buy because I mean, especially spending you know, $400 or more on one of these juice machines, you know, that's a, that's a pretty penny, right? That's a good sizable investment. I mean, that's costing more than some like big stoves or maybe some refrigerators, you know, that are huge. And this is just a little juicing device that sits on your counter. So I think a warranty is very critical because this is an investment. And like any investment, an investment should last. And to, to be guaranteed it's gonna last, you need to have a nice long warranty. So the warranty on the Huram HAA juicer is 10 full years. And that's only on <laughs> the motor base here, right? Uh, if we wanna take the other parts into consideration, it's only two years on these parts. And I, I don't know how much these parts sell for, but I will tell you that the most common part to break on the vertical juicers are the screen uh, due to uh, excessive uh, wear, maybe if you're not juicing properly, so be sure to check my other videos on how to juice properly in a vertical style machine. But that part may run $70 or more, so you're already spending 400 you know, some odd dollars for a juicer, and then in three years, if the screen breaks on the Huram, you gotta buy another screen, which is gonna set you back another 70 bucks. And yeah, after two years, there's no warranty on, on, on the juicing parts except for the motor. And here's the thing, the motor, is the part that's least likely to fail. And so yeah, that's you know 10 years, two years, and that's still pretty good. Two year warranty is pretty good. You know, a lot of the juicers you might buy at your local big box store might have a 90 day or maybe a year warranty, right? Well, let's go ahead and switch over to the Omega. The Omega on this side has a 15 year warranty on the motor base, right? So that's good. But then you can add on this top part, this whole machine actually has a whole 15 year warranty. That's 13 additional years. 
you guys know when you buy a TV or maybe even a cell phone or a you know a kitchen appliance they always try to like sell you that extended warranty those sleazy salesmen yeah, I want to say that extended warranty you know it's only X you know X many dollars 100 more dollars and you'll have another two years of warranty coverage right why buy an extended warranty for the Huram when you get 13 additional years of warranty on the Omega included at the same price so talking about the warranty so the other thing about the Huram company is that you know they've had a maybe shaky background in the US you know they first were distributing it themselves because they're a Korean based company they had a US division then they closed that they let a distributor take over the distribution of the machine and then that ended up not working out and then now they're they're maybe not gonna do it again and they weren't even at the major uh, show this year the trade show for the juicing industry in the US and now they're uh, maybe have and started selling machines again so I kind of wonder, even if you get a warranty, will you able to, you know, will they make good on the warranty if they don't have a, you know, a location in the U.S. to do that? So that's a little bit questionable. But on the other hand, Omega has been, you know, a U.S.-based company, and they were founded here in the U.S.A. And I've met the original founder of Omega Products many times, and they've been operating in the U.S easily for 30 plus years now and they are a strong and established company i've been to their warehouse where they stock all the parts it's like a big costco size warehouse literally with juicers and all kinds of other parts and all the different products they offer so yeah they're established and you will be able to get support for the omega juicer i'm quite confident now this other next thing i'm going to tell you is actually quite shocking so i, I visited the Huron factory in Korea I saw how their previous generation juicers were made and Huram imports their juicers to sell in their USA but they are also what's called an OEM manufacturer so those of you guys that are in the car industry might know what that means but anyways um, they actually make the Omega juicer for Omega yeah so this is actually made in the Huram factory in Korea and then they sell it to Omega, Omega puts their name on it, and then Omega sells it as their juicer here in the States. Now Omega may not want me to tell you guys this, but I don't care because here's the thing. Like, the thing is that this machine works great, and this is my favorite juicer to date. And this is the second generation technology that all the same Huram juicers use. And as such, right, comparing this to virtually any other Huram except the first generation, this machine's gonna have the same exact performance, but also the other benefits. The benefits of buying it from an American established company, uh, the benefit of actually having a 15 year warranty instead of a short two year warranty. And, you know, in that case and in other cases, you know, this machine is also less expensive. Now, let's get into some points where actually the Omega juicer may fall short with some of the new technology. Uh, that's coming out with the Alpha comparing these two uh, side by side uh, I guess the easiest way to do that is just to start taking these guys apart right so if we take off this top housing and this top housing they look kind of similar right and here check this out this is a trip watch this you guys aren't gonna believe this I'm gonna put this housing on top of this machine and I'm going to go ahead and put this housing on the top of this machine. I'm going to turn this machine on. I'm going to turn that machine on. Look at that. <laughs> I just took the Omega housing, put it on the Huram, the Huram housing on the Omega. They're interchangeable, the whole housing. Now, I wouldn't be interchanging the parts because the parts will not interchange, but the whole housings are. So this is actually quite interesting. But uh, that being said, there are some specific differences to these machines, and they are significant. So let me go ahead and start by taking off the, uh, the top funnel feed chute there. Now look at that feed chute there on both these machines, right? Can you guys see that? The feed chute on the Omega is actually nice and big, and the feed chute on the Huram is actually as big, but then they got a cutout here that takes away a good percentage of the feed chute size. So now you're getting a smaller feed chute on already a small feed chute compared to some of the wider feed chute, uh, you know, slow juicers. So yeah, that kind of sucks. I mean, I, I don't know what I want to estimate like how much smaller it is, but you know, that's a good sizable, you know, at least 20, 25% smaller 
30% smaller in my opinion. And that, that definitely will slow you down when juicing. That's the main thing. Oh, and I like that this is actually clear so you can kind of see what's going on in here. This one's all black. This one seems to be a little more heavy duty because this is like, uh, seems to be like uh, maybe one piece uh, except for the funnel, which is a different piece. And actually this is uh, two pieces, this piece and then this piece. All right, next let's get down to the auger itself. This is the auger out of the VSJ843. This is the auger out of the Huram HAA. Now these augers pretty much look similar except for this one on the VSJ actually has the wing tips. You know, they have now taken away the wing tips on the uh, Ultra um, line, which I think is a bad move. You'll see why in a minute. And actually on the bottom of the augers, they look actually fairly similar as well. They both have that inset cut underneath, so pulp will get underneath the auger as it's juicing, but they use this, in my opinion, as a strain relief so that pulp does not back up. So that's always gonna happen. And they look to be pretty similar on the bottom. Uh, the actually, uh, the grind on the auger and the actual lines, if you guys could see that, they look pretty similar to me. So, I mean, the augers, except for the wings, are pretty much the same. Next, let's go ahead and go into the juicing screens here. We're going to compare the juicing screens. Now, aside from the whole top set, right, all these parts are not interchangeable. And uh, you can see why, because they basically made the screen a little bit different, right? It has these ridges on there on this one, and uh, this one does not. But uh, just looking at the screens side by side, it looks like, the whole size is pretty much identical and there's pretty much the same exact screen area. So what does this mean for you guys? It means that these machines are probably going to get the same exact yield because this is basically the same screen and they changed the molding just a little bit. Maybe they did this to call it an upgrade and charge you guys more for it, which, you know, I don't really, uh, you know, see a problem with that. That's what companies do. But once again, you can get the lesser uh, expensive machine. Um, and it's going to produce the same exact yield. So yeah, screens pretty much identical. Next, over to the wiping blade. This is where we have some differences actually. If we look at the wiping blade on the VSJ843, it's a little bit bigger. So you might think, John, is that going to take you more time to clean because you got to brush your brush against this top part and this one's like kind of like, uh, you know, low profile. Um, it looks like actually the silicone blades are pretty much identical on both which they have uh, two blades, uh, it's two silicone blades, both outside and inside. These silicone blades are very important. They kind of keep the, uh, the bowl wiped down and the screen wiped down so that you can get the highest yield. And then uh, they have just the two plastic wings just there for looks that don't really do much. Um, now the other major thing that is different on these two screens is the bottoms major difference. I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe we'll put it at an angle for you guys. But this one has a smooth bottom, right? And this one actually has teeth or gears on the bottom. One of the biggest things that I liked about the VSJ843 that's made by Huram for Omega and all their other second generation uh, models is that it doesn't have these teeth on the bottom of the blade like the first generation did. I really hated the teeth because I got to get a cleaning brush in between these teeth and let me tell you, you know, uh, richly pigmented juices such as beta carotenes from carrots and the really dark turmeric color from turmeric, that stuff really stains. Actually last night I was making um, uh, coconut cream in this machine and the coconut cream got stuck between all these teeth, man. It was a bear to clean. So I like that they removed the teeth, but now they brought the teeth back. Um, I think this is actually a poor decision. I think the only reason why they did this is because they could change the gearing on how fast this wiping blade spins and they've reduced the speed of the wiping blade instead of remaining constant with the juicer. So this they may see as an upgrade. I don't see the main benefit of reducing the speed of the wiping blade personally and I just see it harder to clean now due to all these teeth that also may hold up some of the yield that the juicer is creating. Last, of course, let's go to the bowl here. Uh, you know, the bowls look very similar, and as I showed you guys before, we could take one bowl and 
drop it on the other machine and these are bolts are interchangeable. Once again, these parts are not interchangeable unless you do the whole top set. But uh, you know, there are some major differences. Uh, let's see here. First off is that they're both marked to 450 milliliters on the bowl. Uh, the next thing is actually looks like uh, the Huram actually uh, has a different uh, gasket, although I feel two uh, different uh, basically locking uh, rings in there. And then on the Omega, I also feel two rings on there as a gasket to prevent leakage on top of the motor base, so that's pretty similar. Of course, uh, this unit has a circular uh, spout where the juice comes out, and now they've actually changed this one to a square. So you might think the square looks kind of cool, or you might like the circle, you know. Um, I'm kind of more circle than square, right? <laughs> Huey Lewis would disagree. He would say it's hip to be square. But I, I found actually by using this, you know, this tends to leak a little bit more just because it's a square. I mean, it doesn't really gain you too much benefit when juicing, other than actually more surface area to clean. And I find this is a little bit more clunky because it's a lot bigger, uh, you know, than the uh, circular, uh, you know, spout cap here. The next thing that's a little bit different is uh, the outlet port. These both have very big uh, pulp outlet ports. I like it because I could actually get my finger in there and other juicer manufacturers should take this into consideration because when you're done juicing, there's always pulp stuck in here and I like to be able to get my finger in there instead of having to take some kind of tool such as the back end of the toothbrush uh, cleaning tool that's provided a screwdriver end to get in there to clean. Uh, this model, the Alpha model, has actually made it improved because it's actually big enough to get your finger in there plus they actually have a little cutout here so you have a little bit easier access. This doesn't make any, doesn't make it majorly easier to get into clean, but it's kind of nice nonetheless. It's kind of more, you know, cosmetic. Now another feature that does matter and does make a big difference in my opinion is uh, down here. This is actually the uh, silicone uh, pulp flap. And what this pulp flap does is it keeps back pressure on the pulp to allow it to stay inside the machine and only lets it out when it's dry. So on the Omega VSJ, this is totally removable and you need to remove it when cleaning and when you have it assembled and you're gonna be juicing, you put it back in. Over on the Huram actually, they also have this uh, pulp flap but you cannot remove it. It's actually attached to this lever which you could uh, press this lever and it closes and opens it. So you can actually adjust this while juicing if you needed to, which may be a good or bad thing. Um, but I will tell you after using this uh, Huram machine for a week, the real bad thing about this lever, and this will catch up, catch up to you and bite you in the butt one of these days, is that this little uh, gasket piece, you, you could kind of clean like the bottom side of it, but the top side, I mean, it's, it's very hard to kind of peel this back and bend it over so you can clean the top side. You know, I have friends that have VSJs and I mean, if you don't clean it judiciously after each use, top and bottom, you'll get mold growth on this. Now, you know, of course, this is, this is uh, you know, uh, gray on my original uh, VSJ, so I could kind of see that mold growth. Um, I don't know if they did this on purpose or not, but they made it a black gasket so you won't see any mold growth because the mold is black that grows on there. So yeah, that's not very easy to clean, which is, my, is not a really good thing in my opinion. Now the other thing that's different about these units is that on the bottom of this machine there is no gear. And there is no gearing or anything underneath this uh, main bowl underneath here. There's basically a gear and this gear is turned when the motor shaft turns and it has a ratio so that as it's turning, uh, this smaller gear inside the bowl uh, turns at a lower rate to spin that wiping blade at a speed other than the 43 RPMs that the motor spins at. And uh, you know, I'd like that they actually remove the gear on the VSJ843 personally because I use my juicer almost every day. And let me tell you, trying to clean the bottom of this gear here and cleaning the bottom of this gear here, you know, that takes me another 30 seconds, maybe a minute sometimes when I get like celery and strings and stuff, you know, clogged underneath there. I want a quick and easy juicing process. So, you know, that's why I believe, you know, in this regard, the second generation Omega VSJ843 is a better buy because it's easier to clean overall. 
In addition, I have noticed that, you know, because there's this gearing that you guys can't really see in here that's spun by this thing, you can kind of see some of it underneath there. Um, every time I wash this, water gets inside that gearing and it doesn't really dry out. So I don't really like that that's all, all that stuff that's underneath there. It's, you know, gearing and all this stuff is more things to break, in my opinion. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the main differences between these two. Um, at present time, let's talk about the price difference. The price difference is actually uh, with the coupon that you'll learn about at the end of this episode, the VSJ843 is actually $60 less than the Alpha Series. And as you guys just saw, you know, it's, it's you know, better in my opinion. It has a longer warranty, easier to clean, and you know, I mean, the yields, I mean, they basically use the same parts, should be very similar. Let's go ahead and reassemble this. Both units reassembly is the same. You're basically going to take the wiping blade, put that on the screen. You're going to uh, drop that screen in there. I do like that there's no like dots to line up like some other machines. You're going to take your auger, spin that auger in there, make sure it drops down in the, into the uh, top of the juicing screen. And then you're going to go ahead and take your, put your top on. Uh, similar thing with the Huram. Take the screen, put it through the wiping blade, drop that in place. It's going to lock down into place uh, once you get the gears lined up and then you're going to put the auger in there and then you could go ahead and uh, drop the top on. Very simple and easy. Now the Omega does cost less. That being said, the Alpha series does include a few additional parts that the VSJ does not. And you'll have to decide if this is worth the you know, additional you know, uh, cleaning time that you're going to take. Also the shorter warranty. Besides a fine juicing screen, it includes a coarse juicing screen that's gonna allow you to put more pulp in your juice. Some people may want more pulp in your juice. If you wanna do that, the easy solution is just take some pulp that comes out of the machine and put it back in your juice. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Another thing that the Alpha Series comes with is a nice drain rack for cleaning uh, the juicer, which is just an extra piece of plastic that I don't believe you need. When I clean my juicer, what I do is I basically uh, set this part upside down on my drain rack. I clean the auger. I set the auger upside down on the uh, top, and then I basically just uh, you know lightly set these pieces like this, like this, and then I set this separately to the side. And I don't need a special cleaning rack. I think that's kind of like a, a gimmick, personally. Another thing the Alpha Series comes with is a tofu maker. I don't know about you, but I don't know too many people that actually eat tofu these days. Um, if you want to make tofu, hey, this comes with it. But it's just that, you know, you could use a simple kind of like a, a sieve and a cheesecloth and, a, and other things, uh, you know, to make tofu if you'd like. Um, let's see, along with that, the other thing that actually comes with the Huram HA that actually I like, that I wish the Omega came with, is actually a, uh, sorbet screen so this allows you to make a sorbets inside the juicing chamber and instead of using the juicing screen they just have a screen that drops in in place of that so you do grinding without having the stuff come through the screen that makes it a little bit more easy and convenient but that being said omega does warranty their machines so that you can do sorbets and nut butters with the actual juicing screen if i remember i'll put a link down below this video so you could watch the video where actually i make sorbet in the VSJ and it tastes amazing because of the juicing screen out of the juicing screen when you're making the sorbet you get the finest sorbet stuff that's like really whipped up and if you're using the whole screen it's not going to get that for you so I do like that you could still do that feature although you don't exactly have the specific attachment but yeah that's that's basically the difference you know so you could buy a juicer that's sixty dollars less and has equivalent features easier to clean and has a longer warranty now i always like to put my money where my mouth is as much as i like the vsj 43 and you know the Huram. you know there's it's, it's not a waste of money but there are better values out there i want to see how it performs i want to let you guys know that i have been using this machine now for the last week in my personal kitchen to see how it works juicing different things and based on my observations and my using it it works pretty much just like the vsj so I thought I would do a juice off comparison for you guys uh, with one of my favorite fruits to juice this time of year, the good almighty cactus fruit. So let's go ahead and uh, get my cactus fruits. We'll bring them out and then we're gonna juice off comparison between the Huram HAA and the VSJ843 to see which juicer will reign supreme in this juice off 
comparison. So now I'm all set up, ready to juice. We got our uh, juice collection cups. I'm using some Pyrex two cup measuring cups. We got our pulp catch containers, and we got the fruits that we're gonna be juicing today all prepared on scales, and we'll do a weigh-in in a second for you guys. What we're gonna be juicing today are these guys right here. This is what they look like at the store, or if you're lucky enough to have cactus that grows around you, they're gonna make these cactus fruits. So the Nepalese cactus makes these cactus fruits. that are quite delicious, and there's several dozen varieties of cactus fruits that are available. And they're generally in season, you know, uh, throughout the winter time. So that's really nice. I really love it. They're one of my most favorite fruit juices to drink. They kind of have like a mucilaginous texture, which is actually quite good for you. And in addition, the uh, red colored cactus fruits are the ones I would encourage you guys to get. Uh, they're very high in betalanes as well as other uh, antioxidants and polyphenols. And it's shown that they're one of the most anti-inflammatory fruits in the whole wide world. So with that, let's go ahead and do a weigh-in to make sure we have an even fight. All right, let's take a look at the scales here. Over on the scale of the side of the Omega, looks like we have 30.2 ounces of the cactus fruits. Over on the side of the Huram, it also looks like we have 30.2 ounces of the cactus fruits to juice. So now we're ready to juice in Bow Juicer. Let's go ahead and get these scales out of the way. We'll leave that. These cactus fruits for the VSJ we'll be juicing in a second. These cactus fruits are for the Huram. We'll put our unpeeled cactus fruits aside. Now the only thing we're gonna have to do to juice these fruits or actually cut them up maybe into half or maybe in the case of the Huram because of the smaller feed shoot into thirds as they will not just go in to the juicer as it sits. Because of the Huram smaller feed shoot, this may take additional time, so I want to go ahead and time this for you guys to uh, see if you know it makes a difference and how much longer it's going to take. So let's go ahead and hit the start button here and get started. We're going to go ahead and turn on the Huram. We're going to take our knife and our cutting board, and we're going to go ahead and cut up the cactus fruits in half one at a time and drop them on in. And this is a little bit big, so we're going to have to like push it in there and mash up the fruit to get it to go past the uh, smaller feed shoot there. As you guys can see, we got the uh, cactus fruit juice coming out, and basically we're just gonna go ahead and have to cut each one in half and uh, drop it in. Uh, you know, the cool thing about the VSJ843 and the Huram HAA juicers is that these are the juicers that I find juice the cactus fruits the best. They grind up to a sufficient level so that they really, you know, get the driest cactus fruit pulp that I've seen with minimally or without grinding the seeds. This is actually very critical. Uh, some juicers are so good, they'll actually grind up the seeds, in which case they'll call it, cause a blockage and cause the juicer to jam up and potentially break on you. And uh, other vertical slow juicers that I've tested actually are not so good and actually they'll just basically eject a uh, whole big pieces of the seeds plus still uh, pretty wet juice. Uh, this is working pretty well. I think to save some time, what we're gonna have to do is uh, we're just gonna go ahead and speed this up and we'll come back at you when I'm done. All right, we got the last two pieces of cactus fruits in there. Hopefully we don't, um, <laughs> Overload our catch cups there. It looks like we're getting right to the brim there. <laughs> the cactus fruits are definitely full of a lot of juice. Now, after you put the last produce item in, you do want to let the juicer run just a little bit more until the, uh, the pulp stops moving out of the machine and until all the most of the juice is done, dripped out of the machine. I think I'll let this run just a little bit more and then we'll come back at you when we have the uh, total time elapsed. All right, so the pulp is pretty much stopped coming out of the machine and it looks like we're at uh, about uh, three minutes and 10 seconds. We're gonna go ahead and hit stop and hit the reset button there. Go ahead and turn this machine off. And we're gonna go ahead and put that spout cap down. Move this to the side. We're gonna move this over. Now I'm all set and ready to juice in the VSJ843. So let's hit the start, turn that machine on and it's gonna be a lot easier to cut these guys in half and drop them in and do the larger feed shoot. All right. 
save time, we're just going to go ahead and speed this up for you guys and uh, come back at you when I'm done. Alright, we're down to our last piece of cactus fruit to feed in to the VSJ843. A few times during juicing the VSJ843 did stop and that was because I was overloading the machine because I was able to put things in in the larger feed chute uh, faster than it could accept it. Um, got too many seeds in there, put some resistance against the motor, caused it to stop and then I actually had to hit the reverse momentarily and then went forward again. And uh, as you guys can see the last cactus fruit is going through the VSJ843. And once again, we're gonna let this run just a little bit more to get all the juice out uh, before we stop the machine. All right, looks like we're done. And it's at 2.59 <laughs> when I looked at it. So it took 10 seconds uh, less to juice in the VSJ843. Let's go ahead and stop this baby, put that spout cap down. And now let's go ahead and check the results with these guys out the way. And uh, very carefully move this guy over. And move this guy over. So just looking at that off the top of my head, I mean, it's so close. I think it's almost like a tie. I mean, I could, I'll give you guys a close up of this shot and you could tell me what you guys think. <laughs> but it's like pretty much dead even. All right, so here is the yields on both the juicers as you guys can see this is like a little bit over the Pyrex and this is a little bit over the Pyrex if I had to say anything I'd say that the Haram maybe made a little bit more juice than the VSJ but I mean they're both so so similar so now that you guys saw that the yields were pretty much similar, I want to go ahead and check out the uh, pulp that was generated on both these machines. And the pulp pretty much looks pretty much the same. I mean, impressive job both these juicers did. Basically, they're the similar juicers, so this doesn't surprise me. I mean, basically, you just got all the seeds out with really, really dry pulp. This is drier pulp than I've seen on any other uh, juicer on the market uh, for juicing cactus fruits. And if you want to use cactus fruits, this is the machine you will want to buy. Let's see, lastly, I want to go ahead and try the juices to see if there's any differences. I mean, the yields, they're pretty much similar. Maybe the Huron made like a, a tad more, but not much. Let's carefully pour this out. Just enough to try it. This is not like a really thin juice. It's a little bit thick just due to the nature of the cactus fruits. It's quite good. Cactus fruit is one of my favorite juices. And then the uh, juice from the VSJ. I mean, there's no discernible uh, difference in the texture of juice, which is what I was looking for. I mean, the holes in the juicers, the screens are the same exact size. And so I guess at the end of this uh, juice off comparison, here's my final thoughts, right? I personally am gonna have to declare the winner, the Omega VSJ843, and there's several reasons. Uh, if you wait to the end of this video, uh, you're gonna save a $60 difference over that machine by this using a special coupon code. That's reason number one. Reason number two, it took a little bit less time to feed things in. I have been using this machine for the past week and I find that just with a little bit smaller feed chute, it really impairs my ability uh, you know, to juice uh, in, a good, in a decent amount of time. So I really like that this actually um, allows you to juice faster. Of course, if you're handy with a Dremel, you could probably Dremel this out. Um, they also give you a smaller uh, pusher to feed that in. I don't know why they did that. I think that's a really not a good idea. The other thing is I like the VSJ843 because it's easier to clean. It takes me less time to clean. It might take me 30 seconds, a minute more to clean. This machine due to the, uh, you know, the gears on the bottom of the wiping blade and the gears inside the unit itself. In addition, I don't like the fact that you cannot wash the outlet plug 
that is uh, fixed inside there, whereas on the VSJ, easier to clean on the inside, and you could easily clean the top and the bottom of the outlet port plug. I mean, I think that, oh, and then of course, let's not forget about the warranty, 15 full years on the whole entire machine versus two years on the Hurum. You know, I'd encourage Hurum to, you know, up their warranty and offer replacement parts for all their machines on their website. Also make it easier for customers to get a hold of them because I had had also complaints in the past with people having challenges getting hold of and getting taken care of by Hurum. I do want to give you guys a disclaimer. At present time, we do not offer the Hurum juicers. I have asked Hurum on several occasions to sell their juicers because I'd be glad to sell them because they offer their own pros and cons. Uh, they have denied me from allowing me to sell their machine, so I bought this one uh, you know, for full price to be able to do this demo for you and spread the truth. And maybe that's what they're afraid of. You know, I don't care who makes the machine. If the juicer performs better than my previous juicer, that's the one that I'm going to be using the most in my house. And I hope that Hurom or whomever makes that machine, and I don't care who it's made by, I'll sell it, I'll use it, and I'm just here to share with you guys what happens and explain to you the machines without any kind of marketing fluff and kind of just show you guys what exactly happens. Because my life was changed by juicing and I believe if you get the right juicer and you have the right information to choose the right juicer, you will get the right juicer. And that's why I'm glad I could make these juicing videos. But also at the same time, I could learn like, okay John, should I really get the Huram HA8? It's the new Alpha series and it's, it's the newer series over the uh, second generation series. And I was like, man, maybe that's a better juicer. Maybe I gotta, I gotta start using that and sell it. Well, now after using it, I've definitely confirmed, man, there's some pros to it, of course, but there's a lot more cons and pros. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my VSJ843. And I wanna encourage you guys also to stick with the Omega VSJ843 instead of a Hurum juicer. You just get far more benefits and uh, it's a far better machine, in my opinion, based on my testing. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I would encourage you guys to support me in my work so I can continue to make these juicer videos, comparing different juicers and introducing you guys to new juicers and sharing my thoughts on it. And your purchase at discountjuicers.com allows me to do this. If you buy it anywhere else, it's not going to allow me to continue making my videos, which is quite sad. I love making the videos and teach you guys about the fresh juices, as well as other uh, topics on YouTube like growing your food and why you should eat fruits and vegetables and all these kind of things. So I thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that have supported me in the past and thank you guys for those of you guys that will support me in the future and make your purchase at Discount Juicers so I can continue my life's work and my mission to educate the world about the power of fruits and vegetables as well as the appliances that allow you to eat more of them. I did mention that since you watched to the end of this video, there'll be a special coupon code. So if you want to get a $20 discount not available anywhere else, be sure to use the discount code OMEGA20, that's O-M-E-G-A-2-0 with no spaces, on our website, discountjuicers.com, when you're buying the VSJ843, and you'll get a $20 discount off your price. Uh, you know, so save the most money and get one of the best vertical juicers on the planet. Also, be sure to thumbs this video up if you liked it. I'll be sure to make more videos with the Hurum HAA, comparing it to other slow juicers that I have. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes I have coming out about every five to seven days. You never know what juicer I'll be showing you, what juicer I'll be comparing, or what new technology we'll be sharing with you guys on this channel because I stay abreast of all the latest technology in the marketplace so you guys can process fruits and vegetables the best way. In upcoming episodes, we'll spill some beans here. I have an upcoming a new dehydrator technology to share with you guys and new blending technology that's going to blow your guys' socks off. And also be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, over 450 videos on this YouTube channel, uh, explaining to you guys how to select the right juicer, also testing and demonstrating and comparing juicers side by side so you guys can get the best juicer for you. Because over 20 years ago, I was in the same predicament as you. I had to buy a new juicer and I didn't have somebody to go to like me that basically not just told you, but showed you how each juicer performs. So yeah, be sure to check my past episodes. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.
right, this is John Cole with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and I know a lot of you guys watching this video right now might be in the market for a juicer. You're shopping for a juicer and you want to get the best one, and thank God you found my videos because I am the juicing expert that's going to share with you guys and show, show you guys actually in the videos 